If you're thinking about buying a home in Lincoln City in 2024, this will be a great video for you as we cover the pros and the cons. If you're not familiar with the area, this will be a good video to, uh, to get you up to speed. And for all the people that are familiar, maybe you live in the area, feel free to let us know what your pros and cons are in the comments. Let's go. everyone, welcome back to the channel. Living on the Oregon coast, I am your host, Seth Marchand. I've got about half a dozen different pros, half a dozen different cons, then I got a couple wild cards for you at the end. We're gonna start with the pros first. My first pro for Lincoln City, we're gonna head to the map to take a look around here, is going to be the area and all the different neighborhoods and all the different communities that you can find around Lincoln City. It is going to be unique in that it's probably going to have the biggest feel to it, especially if you're not familiar with the Oregon coast. The Coos Bay North Bend area to the south is slightly bigger. However, that area is significantly more inland. And uh, one thing you're going to notice about Lincoln City, all of the little communities and all the unincorporated areas, all the neighborhoods, everything kind of really borders and runs parallel to the coast. So pretty much every little neighborhood is going to be within five or ten minutes of a really great beach. And a lot of these areas have their own sort of unique feel from the northernmost part to Rhodes End, one of the most popular parts of Lincoln City. And as we move south, and especially if you're not familiar with the area, if you're just driving through the area on the 101, one thing that you're going to notice if you've driven through other towns is this area probably just feels a lot bigger. And you're probably not going to notice when you drive past Sealets Bay that these little communities down here, Salishan, Glen Eden Beach, Lincoln Beach, this is all going to feel like one big part of Lincoln City. Now, in city limits, there's about 10,000 people, but if we include Salishan, Glen Eden Beach, Lincoln Beach, there's maybe about 3,000, 3,500 people there. And then, of course, uh, if we include some of these areas around the lake, Devil's Lake, like Niatsu, the total population is going to be closer to 14 or 15,000 people. And there are quite a few homes all around this lake. So if you want the best of both worlds, if you want to be on a lake but close to the coast, this will be one of the few places that you can do it. And there are quite a few waterfront, oceanfront homes. Everybody wants an oceanfront view or some sort of water view that's moving to the Oregon coast. And this is going to be one of the places where you can find about as many water views as really anywhere else along the Oregon coast. All these neighborhoods are a little bit different. They're a little bit unique. Salishan is completely gated. There's a bunch of gated little communities within here as well. But you can kind of describe all of these communities as small, quaint, quiet, and overall very, very desirable for the Oregon coast. And that'll take me into my next pro for the Oregon coast, which is going to be affordability. Average prices along the Oregon coast right now, let me take you to some data here real quick. The Oregon coast MLS here gives us prices uh, on this graph sorted by a median price. We can see most recently active median list price was 515,000. Sold median sale price as of February 24th of this year, 2024, in the low 400,000s at 417,000. Average prices along the Oregon coast about 450 to 500,000. So Lincoln City's right kind of in that average, but uh, with a greater population there, like I said, if you include these surrounding communities, you're getting close to 15,000 people, which for the Oregon coast, uh, again, with the exception of Coos Bay, North Bend, is about as big as it gets right now as it stands. If I look at inventory, single family homes under $400,000 which is uh, about as cheap as it kind of gets uh, along the Oregon coast, unless you're looking at something really old and something that needs a lot of work. That gives us uh, 13 different results. And this is at the slower time of the year. In the winter time, we expect the inventory to pick up here, of course, coming into the springtime. So for anybody that really wants to get into Lincoln City, you can find just about something for anybody. So it can be very affordable. There's even a new build right in there at 369000 so these aren't just older, smaller homes that need a ton of work. You can actually find some stuff that's move-in ready well beyond or well below $400,000. And of course, affordability is a big thing these days. That's one of the biggest problems we have in the real estate market. And what's slowing down transactions is uh, higher interest rates, low inventory, creates higher prices, higher mortgage 
payments, which leads to greater unaffordability. So Lincoln City, if you want to get into the Oregon coast and you have maybe a less than an average budget, with the exception of the Coos Bay North Bend area, this will be one of the places where you can find at least a, a decent selection of affordable homes. My next pro on the list is going to be amenities and services. And this is really going to be commensurate with the population. The places that have a greater population along the Oregon coast, especially the places that receive more tourism, which Lincoln City does, do tend to have more amenities and services. And that's a big deal for a lot of people because the Oregon coast is a very small place. A lot of small towns, a lot of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 sized towns. And so for a lot of people moving to the Oregon coast, a lot of those people are coming from larger towns, whether it's from Oregon or outside states. People, regardless of where you're coming from, this is going to feel like a smaller area, but at least Lincoln City is going to have a little bit more than a lot of the other towns. I'm right now at the city's website. They do have a community center. There's a pool at that community center. Not very common for the Oregon coast. You won't find a whole lot of pools along the Oregon coast. Aside from that, there's a ton of great restaurants in and around Lincoln City, especially if you include the entire county, which goes down into Depot Bay and Newport. The county itself, just anecdotally, I would say probably has more highly rated restaurants than anywhere else along the Oregon coast. Probably should everything everything you need for grocery shopping. There is a Safeway there. There's a handful of mom and pop shops. Uh, there are some Ace Hardware stores. There's no Home Depot or Lowe's. You don't really find that along the Oregon coast except up north in Warrington. So you usually have to go inland for those things. But a lot of the local hardware stores, and in this case the Ace Hardware stores, are going to have everything you need. You do have Salem, which is just an hour to the east of Lincoln City. If you do need to go to a Home Depot or a store that you can't find there, you get a handful of movie uh, theaters, and you do have the Casino for Entertainment as well. So your amenities, services along the Oregon coast in Lincoln City, probably about as good as they get. And I'm going to include the hospital in Lincoln City as a pro as well. Now, I'm sure there's some people going to that uh, that might have uh, complaints and, and probably maybe a valid complaint about the hospital. But uh, a lot of people along the Oregon coast are retiring. They're up there in age and uh, being close to a hospital is important to most people. Now, you're, you're not going to be typically more than 30 or 45 minutes away from a major hospital, regardless of where you're at on the Oregon coast. But if you're in Lincoln City, you do have one very, very close by. You also have a major hospital down in Newport, just to the south of you. And I'm sure you could find some people that might put hospitals uh, in the negative or the cons category for this type of list. As you can see, uh, you're not going to find the highest rated healthcare along the Oregon coast. You know, with the exception of restaurants or food, probably not going to find the highest rated anything, probably uh, for the most part along the Oregon coast. So what you're seeing here is kind of more so par for the course more so than any sort of exception. The biggest complaint you hear with hospitals is going to be that uh, you don't have a whole lot of, or in some cases, really any specialists. So if you need a specialist, you might have to wait a long time because the hospital's outsourcing a specialist from a place in the valley like a Salem or like a Eugene or like a Medford if you're at, down in the south, southern Oregon coast and just maybe finding a primary care provider, uh, you might not have uh, the most amount of options. But like I said, you do have a major hospital close by you. So for that reason, I put it in the pros list. That's not gonna be the case for all of the towns along the Oregon coast. Now my next pro is that uh, proximity to a major town. You are just about an hour away from Salem. And in that sense, it makes Lincoln City a little bit unique. As far as major towns, having to go inland to major towns, whether it's for something like I mentioned, like a Home Depot, an airport, which I'll get to in a minute, maybe healthcare, something that you can't find along the Oregon coast, Lincoln City, with the exception of Florence, just to the west of Eugene, is going to have about the best proximity to a major town. There's about a couple hundred thousand people in Salem, and Lincoln City to Salem is about an hour drive. Eugene to Florence is just under an hour drive, but other than that, if you want to be able to get to a big city, whether it's Roseburg, Medford, Eugene, Salem, Portland, a lot of this stuff is going to be about two hours for a lot of towns along the Oregon coast. When you get down to the southern Oregon coast, you might be looking like three to four hours to get some places towards the valley inland along I-5. So if you want to have some kind of proximity to like a, a bigger town, Lincoln City is going to be about as close as it gets. 
my next pro for Lincoln City is going to be the beaches. You're going to have about as many good beaches and about as much unobstructed beach along Lincoln City and all these towns as anywhere along the Oregon coast. And I say unobstructed because there's going to be places, especially when you get down into the southern Oregon coast, where you don't have miles and miles and stretches of beaches because the rock formations or the shorelines or whatever it may be ends or blocks you know, access to the next beach. And a lot of people, of course, coming to the Oregon coast want to walk, hike, bike, all that kind of stuff. And it's really about as good as you're going to find in Lincoln City. Lots of places to go hiking as well. A big thing to do in Lincoln City is to find these glass floats. My aunt just found one uh, for the first time. And some people have been searching their entire lives. They, anytime you go to Lincoln City, you look for these glass floats. My aunt just found one for the first time this past summer. And there's a lot of other stuff along the beach, a lot of agates, uh, a lot of other stuff if you're a beachcomber to find along these beaches. So beaches in Lincoln City, all the parks, the hiking, all of the stuff that people move to the Oregon coast or Oregon for are as good as it gets along the Oregon coast. And then finally, my last pro I'm going to leave you with for Lincoln City is going to be the people. I think the people in general are about as friendly as it gets along the Oregon coast. In general, the people along the Oregon coast are fairly friendly, I would say, and are welcoming of outsiders. There's sort of this stereotype that Oregonians don't want Californians moving here, of course, but there's a lot of transplants here. If you're somebody moving here from outside of the state, you're probably going to meet a lot of other people that have relocated to this area as well. And so the people that have lived here uh, for you know decades and decades, for the most part, are going to be very welcoming of all of the transplants and all the things that comes with living on the Oregon coast, such as tourism. So in general, I would say the people are very friendly, despite what you may have heard. All right, now on to the cons. First con on my list is going to be crime. All right, the first thing I want to say about crime, of course, is crime is very, very subjective. In other words, what you think might be high crime or low crime is going to vary from what other people think. So we'll take a look at some data here real quick so we don't have to be so subjective. Uh, I'll share kind of with you just my opinions towards, towards the end of this uh, as we get through the data here kind of on Lincoln City and the coast in general. But uh, real quick, number, so a total crime index, uh, 11, this uh, website, neighborhoodscout.com, which is one of the first things that will come up on Google if you if you Google search uh, crime, 100 being the safest. So just right out of the gate, uh, safer than 11% of the U.S. neighborhoods uh, doesn't sound good. How many, how many crimes were there in Lincoln City annually? 294, it says 39 were violent. 255 were property crimes. So how does this compare to Oregon? For every 1,000 people, that would be 3.91 violent crimes. For Lincoln City, for Oregon, the average is 3.42 every 1,000 people. So higher than the state average, chances of becoming a victim of violent crime in Lincoln City, 1 in 256, 1 in 292 in Oregon. So for people not familiar with the area, it's going to, just reading those numbers, you, you might feel like you have to be wary uh, going to this area. The actual total numbers, again, population here, just under 10,000 people. Lincoln City, violent crimes, uh, two murders, three rapes, six robberies, and 28 assaults. And you can bet that uh, something like 99% of these people knew each other or had some sort of connection to each other. So the overall number of violent crimes and chances of being a victim of one of these crimes again if you didn't know the uh, you know the person committing the crime are, are very very low so if you're just glancing at this stuff you might feel like Lincoln City has high crime and like I said you might feel a little bit weary but uh, anecdotally um, I, I don't know anybody that's lived there or had a second home there that has complained about the crime being subjective like I mentioned a lot of people that are moving to this area are coming from larger areas that uh, probably have relatively higher crime. So I think for most people, Lincoln City is going to feel like it has low crime. But if we're just looking at the numbers, especially related to the, uh, the Oregon coast, the Oregon coast in general is very, very low crime. You know, a lot of these towns are going to have like literally one burglary or two thefts, you know, something like that um, annually. Again, the population is really low. That, that's part of it. But Lincoln City does tend to rate just a little bit higher than other places on the Oregon coast. The only place that probably sees numbers that are a little bit higher than Lincoln City would be Coos County, Coos Bay, North Bend area. So should you feel safe in Lincoln City? Um, in my opinion, yes. Again, anecdotally, I would say definitely yes. But 
if you're not familiar with the area, if you're just doing a Google search, you're probably going to see this. And so we got to include that on the cons list. Now, number two on our cons list is going to be the tourism. Now, this is something that anecdotally you will hear more about, probably more specifically for people that have lived there their entire lives or lived there for a long time. This is a place that receives a lot of tourism, especially in the summertime. This is one of the more popular places for people from Portland to travel to. It's about two hours from Portland to get to Lincoln City. Like I said, you got a lot of people coming from Salem as well because it's just an hour away. And then even Eugene is just about two hours away from Lincoln City. And this is more of a resort tourism type of town that's designed to attract people. This isn't uh, like you know a fishing town like a Newport is, for example. So you will see a lot of traffic, especially just along the 101. You're going to see a fair amount of bumper to bumper in the summertime. And uh, again, you do hear people complaining about that. Now, if you're from Southern California and you're used to traffic along the I-5 down there or the 405, this will be like a walk in the park for you. But for locals who aren't really used to traffic, at least for most of the year, when you start to get the bumper to bumper and it takes you, you know, 15 minutes to drive through the city when it should normally take you like seven minutes or something like that, it feels like a lot of traffic, feels like a lot of tourism. You do have to wait in line longer for things like restaurants and stuff like that. Not going to be a con for everybody, but uh, that is a con that you will hear about. Next con on the list is going to be limited jobs. Now, this is going to be true for a lot of the Oregon coast. Some places are going to be maybe a little bit better than others. The major employers in Lincoln City are going to be the city, uh, the school district, the hospital, so uh, just healthcare in general, and then uh, the casino. Now, the city being one of the larger employers uh, kind of tells you everything you need to know. You're not going to find a ton of jobs, not going to be a ton of opportunities. You know, just scrolling through here uh, for jobs, you do see a lot of retail stuff. You do see a lot of healthcare stuff. Given that this is a larger area, you might have some more opportunities than some other areas. But frankly, for a lot of people, uh, nobody is really typically moving to Lincoln City uh, because they found a certain job or a great job there. You know, they might want to start a business there, but a lot of people there are simply retiring there or moving there because of all the other things, all the outdoor stuff. They want to be on the coast. My next con is going to be the weather. So typically the weather for the Oregon coast, the con would be the overcast and the rain, the wind, which is uh, pretty consistent. You can find year round, but there's been something that's been a little bit newer over the last couple of years, and that has been the freezing weather, the snow, the ice, especially over the last couple of years, we've seen some weather that really I don't ever recall seeing as a kid. Typically, if it was going to snow along the Oregon coast, wasn't going to stick. We have seen snow accumulate and actually stay for days. And we've seen ice along the Oregon coast that we haven't seen in recent years. We've also seen a lot of trees down, blocking roads, creating power outages. There's a lot of road work due to erosion. So if you're living on the Oregon coast and for, for whatever reason, maybe it's just, just just because it's a bigger area and I've heard it reported more, it felt like Lincoln City and Lincoln County kind of in general got, got hammered a little bit more by the weather than the other areas along the Oregon coast. I feel like I saw more road closures and power outages around Lincoln County than anywhere else. So if you're going to live in the area and you need to always have power, you might consider a generator. If you need to always get around, you might need to learn some back roads or there's not a lot of back roads. There's not a lot of different ways to go along the Oregon coast. So you might consider that you might have to get stuck maybe for a day or two every year. Again, that didn't really used to be the case 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, 30, 40 years ago when I was growing up. So we'll see how that progresses over the next couple of years. But been pretty consistent over the last three years now that we're seeing these winter storms along the Oregon coast that are causing a lot of power outages and travel delays. Next con for Lincoln City is that uh, it can be hard to find a home to rent. Now, I'm a licensed real estate broker in the state of Oregon and Washington. And around here, realtors don't broker rentals. There is no broker renter relationship. If you're a renter, you're going to reach directly out to the property management company, or sometimes it might be an owner. Some states do have realtors brokering rentals, not in Oregon. So I can't say that I'm an expert on rentals, but I certainly hear a lot of feedback for people that are looking to move to the Oregon coast 
rent for a little while while they get to know the area and then look to purchase a home. And the feedback that we typically hear is that it can be very difficult to find long-term rentals and Lincoln County is no exception. One reason why that might be is because in places that are more resort towns, tourist towns like Lincoln City or like a seaside, a lot of the homes that can be rented there, if they can be rented as short-term rentals, typically it's more profitable to do so. So the investors or the people that just own a second or third home or whatever it may be as an investment in this area if they can and it is highly regulated they will typically rent their home as a short-term rental as a long-term as opposed to a long-term rental and so for that reason you might have inventory just being a little bit lower for the long-term rentals and that's not something we expect to change anytime in the near future and then finally that'll take me into the next con and then we'll get into a few wild cards service providers so this is a pretty common thing for the Oregon coast, it's not necessarily unique to Lincoln City, but I have, again, anecdotally heard a lot of complaints about these things in Lincoln City. Home service providers from electricians, plumbers, contractors, just handymen, movers, you know, whatever it may be. I'm just opening up Yelp and uh, it's sort of by recommended. So, you know, the top things, the, the top companies that are being recommended here, you know, you're gonna find some, probably mostly five-star stuff. But uh, if you go and you start searching around Lincoln City for these various different things, you're not going to find an abundance of these service providers. And it's not going to maybe be like whatever or wherever you're used to coming from. It's not going to be a bunch of five-star, four-star stuff. In fact, just anecdotally, again, being a real estate broker, working with a lot of these people and having to search out a, a lot of these people, you see a lot of three-stars and a lot of complaints from locals. So the service providers are few and far between. Don't be surprised if you get stood up. There are a lot of great service providers along the Oregon coast. But again, uh, if you are coming from any type of big city, and when I say big city, I mean like over 20, 25, 50,000 people, you know, compared to the Oregon coast, it's probably going to be different than what you're used to. It's probably one of the top complaints that we hear from people along the Oregon coast. And again, Lincoln City being no exception, that it is very hard to find service providers and that the quality of work, the service, not always going to be the best or, again, just maybe not what people are used to. All right, now for a couple of wild cards. You tell me, good or bad, uh, PDX, the airport, where a lot of people are going to want to fly in and out of. There is an airport about uh, two hours away just in Eugene as well, but that's mostly, that's just going to be regional. So a lot of people sticking to PDX is going to be two hours away. A lot of people, that's really kind of the magic number is to be within two hours. A lot of people say an hour and a half, not really realistic. But for Lincoln City, having two options right at two hours away, it kind of makes it unique. I would tend to put this in uh, the pros category, it's proximity to two major airports. But again, some people are gonna say it's a little bit too far. All right, how about schools? So Lincoln City Schools, uh, can't put this in the pros, but I didn't wanna put it in the cons either because there are some really great schools in Lincoln City, but this isn't one of the places that people are moving to specifically for schools. None of the like the top rated schools in Oregon are going to be in this area. So it's kind of a wild card, not the best schools, but probably not the worst schools. If you've got kids, you'll probably be okay. But again, people not moving there specifically for the schools. And then one other thing, pro or con that sometimes we hear from people that aren't familiar with the area is there are quite a few different dispensaries along the Oregon coast, especially people coming from uh, California, where in California you can buy liquor in your grocery stores. And in Oregon, the way that's regulated is you, you have a separate store where you buy your liquor. Uh, and, you know, there's probably a handful of those stores uh, throughout Lincoln City, handful of liquor stores, but uh, the marijuana stores, the dispensaries, there's, I mean, I don't even know what the ratio is. I mean, it's got to be like five or six or seven to one dispensaries to liquor stores. So that might be kind of funny to some people. Some people don't like it. Some people do like it. Again, that's why I leave it uh, as a wild card. All right. So I hope that helps you to have a clearer view of the pros and cons of Lincoln City, again, specifically for 2024. My name is Seth Marchant. I'm again, I'm a licensed broker in the state of Oregon. I've helped a lot of people relocate to the Oregon coast from both within Oregon and from outside of the state, especially Lincoln City. In fact, I just put a home under contract last night in Lincoln City, specifically uh, in Salishan. And so if you're somebody that's thinking about taking the next steps, if you have questions, I invite you to call me, email me, text me. 
You can find all the contact information below in the description of this video. If you're watching from TV, you can hit that QR code. It'll take you to our website where you can find all of our contact information. And if you're new to this channel and you'd like to see more videos about what it's like to eat, sleep, play, all the pros and cons of living on the Oregon coast, we've got hundreds of videos on this channel. Make sure and hit the subscribe button. And if this video helped you, if it gave you some good information, give me a thumbs up. Let's me know I'm doing a good job. And until next time, take care, everyone.